I honor the Lord today for my husband, Apostle Rob, amen, for um, our mother, our church mother, Evangelist Mary King, amen, and to all of uh, Christ the Redeemer Ministries and the entire body of Christ, amen. Good morning, good morning, and God bless you. Good morning, and God bless you to our Facebook viewers, to our YouTube watchers and viewers. God bless you. Um, my husband did a salute or salutation to the mothers earlier, so I say again, happy Mother's Day to every mother, uh, to every woman that has played the role of a mother, to every father that's played the role of a mother, and we give uh, homage and pay homage to you all as well as to those that have lost a mom and is not here in the natural today but cherish the memories and the moments that you shared and smile and laugh. Even if you shed a tear, it's okay. But just think about mom would want you to be happy and rejoicing on this day. Amen. For the blessings that you were blessed to have at the time with her. Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead into our scripture passages. Um, I pondered a lot today and last night and yesterday, and I said, God, what would you have me to say to the people today? Amen. And I most definitely do not want to take away from what the Lord would have me to say and to take away from the women. Amen. 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 On this day. So let's go to 1 Samuel. That's one of the passages uh, that I'm going to read amen. from this morning. Amen. amen. First Samuel. Amen. I, I, we have taught on this and some of this before. Amen. In the past. First Samuel beginning at the first verse. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Amen. amen. Lord, we thank you once again, O oh God, for allowing us to gather together in your name, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you've said and done this part during our praise and worship, O oh God, during our prayer time. So, God, as I go before your people, O oh God, and I, I enter into your word, O oh God, I ask that you continue, O oh God, to use me for your glory, O oh God, like never before. For your people, oh God, not for me, but for you to get the glory out of my life yes. continuously, oh God. So God, I ask that you open the minds, oh God, the ears, oh God, and the hearts of your people yes. to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes. It is in Jesus Christ's name. I do pray. Amen and amen and amen. 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 First Samuel, first chapter, first verse. Amen. Three ones. Uh -huh. I'm a prophet, so I, I look at everything with a prophetic eye. Amen. First Samuel, first chapter, and the first verse. Yeah. It reads, Now there was a certain man of Ramathon, Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanai, the son of Joraham, the son of Elihu, the son of Elahu, and the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and the son of Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Skipping down to verse 4. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And I'm skipping down to the 16th verse. Count not thine hand, and Hannah says, count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. I'm skipping down to 20 and I'm done. Amen. Verse 20. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah, 
had conceived that she bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. Amen for now. Amen. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. May the people of God be blessed Amen. by the hearing and the reading of his holy word. Yeah. If you've been in church, raised in church, if you are a Christian, you know the story about Hannah and Peninnah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Samuel and the birth of Samuel. If you have not been around the church or in the church or is not familiar with this story, hallelujah, it started out to say that Elkanah had two wives and one was named Hannah and one was named Penina. Hallelujah. And it says that uh, Penina had a child, but Hannah had not had a child yet. And that the Lord had shut up Hannah's womb. I'm going to slow down. Hallelujah. So as I was studying and preparing this message, the Lord began to speak to me. Hallelujah. And I tried to write notes, but I couldn't make any notes. Hallelujah. I, I pulled out tablets yesterday. I pulled out a pen. Hallelujah. I pulled out the electronic tablet and I pulled out the paper tablet this morning and a pen. Hallelujah. And I still could not make any notes. Hallelujah. And as I continue to study and read, hallelujah, I heard my husband's voice in the spirit. I heard him say, flow in the Holy Ghost. I heard him say, let the Lord use you, honey. Hallelujah. Those are some of the things he says, hallelujah, to me when he picks up in the spirit that the Lord is speaking through me when I'm preaching. Hallelujah. So I heard my husband's voice in the spirit and that confirmed in my spirit that this is why I couldn't make notes because God wanted me to blow in the Holy Ghost. He wanted me to blow in the spirit today. Yes, yes. All right. So Hannah didn't have a child and, and it's, it goes on to say that the Lord shut up her womb. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And some of you may say, well, why the Lord shut up her womb. I don't even know why. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for some unknown, re unknown reason, the Lord shut up Hannah's womb. Hallelujah. So she could not bear children. Uh -huh. So as I was reading this part and, and meditating on this part, uh, I heard the Holy Ghost say that some of you may feel that your womb is shut up. Some of you may feel that your womb has been closed up. And I'm not talking about your natural womb, but if you have a natural womb that's been closed up, I'm blowing in the Holy Ghost. I speak to your womb today to be opened in the name of Jesus. And because we are, we are carriers, hallelujah, of life as women. We carry life in our womb, hallelujah. And it goes on provoked Hannah. Uh -huh. It said her adversary also provoked her sore. Uh -huh. Meaning he provoked her often. He provoked her so much until she had became sore and bitter in her spirit. Uh -huh. oh my God, my God. For to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. Uh -huh. To make her and to make her be afraid, hallelujah, to fret that she will never have a child. Yes. The enemy, the adversary did this thing. Uh -huh. He provoked her yes. daily yes. until she was sore, until she was bitter, until she was angry. And then Panana, who was the adversary or being used by the adversary, she picked on her and jumped at her. And I could just imagine Panada walking by Hannah with her babies, saying, hey, with a head thrown back, throwing up. Y'all know how some may do. Hallelujah. Y'all even know how y'all may have done in the past, throwing off at people. Hallelujah. Picking at them. My grandma used to call it jugging at them. So here we find Panana, Panina passing maybe by Hannah every day wanting her babies and, and, and maybe even saying something out of the corner of her mouth, uh -huh. some on a slick sidebar yeah. note saying, yeah. um, you ain't pregnant yet? Uh -huh. I'm just paraphrasing. Yeah. I could imagine her throwing off at Hannah. Uh -huh. But 
there was something about Hannah. Even though the Lord had shut up her womb, hallelujah, hallelujah, even though the adversary provoked her, yes. all right, all right. there was something that Hannah held on to yes. and never let go of. She never let go and held on to prayer. No matter what went on around Hannah, no matter how much Penina may have picked on her and provoked her, hallelujah, even though she became sore and bitter, even though at times she became fearful, hallelujah, she never stopped praying. All right. Amen. She never lost her focus. Amen. Even with all the things that she was faced with. So in our lives, hallelujah, as women and as men, hallelujah, because the men can piggyback off of this too. Some of us have gone through, maybe all of us or most of us, if you've been on this earth long enough, we've been through some things in our lives. Hallelujah. The adversary has even provoked us. Hallelujah. He may have messed with our children or our spouses. Hallelujah. We've gone through some hard times and some rough times, hallelujah. And even when we've gone through these things, some of us still were able to stand up, hallelujah, and to stay focused. Some of us got knocked down off of our horses. Some of us even stayed there. And God, I want to speak to those, hallelujah, that been through some stuff, hallelujah, that, that, that life has knocked you down, hallelujah, that you got into a place in your life where you feel like you're useless, where you I come to speak to your spirit today. I come to speak to you, woman of God, man of God. Get up. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Get back on track. Hallelujah. Put your eyes on the prize. Put your eyes back on God's divine will and purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Because the adversary, hallelujah, wants to continue to provoke you. Let me know. 
us so hard. But when we realize who we are in God, and when we realize, hallelujah, God's divine purpose and plan for our life, hallelujah, nothing can stop us. Hannah didn't let nothing keep her away from prayer. She didn't let anything keep her from the presence of God and be getting in the presence of God. It goes on to say in this chapter, you can read the rest of it later on, but it goes on to say in this chapter that she prayed so until Eli thought she was drunk. The priest thought that she was drunk with wine, but Hannah was drunk, hallelujah, with a purpose. Hallelujah. She will she prayed uh, and she lay prostrate. Uh, hallelujah before the Lord. Uh, and she was drunk uh, with the wine of purpose. Uh, she was uh, drunk uh, with the wine of desperation. Uh, she was desperate to hear from God. Uh, she was desperate to see God's hand uh, move in her life. Uh, so this is the way the Lord uh, wants us to be. Uh, hallelujah. He wants us to remember the promise. Uh, Don't look at their faces. Do what I told you. 
anointed you. It is I who has appointed you, says God. So we got to change our language. He's calling us to change our prayer language. He's calling us to change our everyday to day language. Hallelujah. So Hannah had to change her prayer language. And when she gave, changed her prayer language and told God, if you give me a son, I'll give it back to you. Something shifted. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Something shifted. So God is calling us uh, as individual Christians and as leaders and as churches and as a body of Christ as a whole. He's calling us to give his church uh, back to him. All right. He's calling us uh, to a place uh, to give ourselves back to him, uh, to put everything in his hand his hands. See, at one point in time, everything may have been in God's hand, but something happened along the way. Maybe the enemy, hallelujah, provoke you into a place uh, and lured you up out of that rightful place in God, or uh, in that place with God that you once were. Yes. So God is calling us back into the place that he originally put us and positioned us in. Hallelujah. We, hallelujah, have to give things back to God. He wants us to take it out of our hand yes, he does. and put it in his hand. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And let him drive. Hallelujah. Make him the head. Put him back in charge of the church. Put him back in charge and ahead of our lives. Yes. Hallelujah. To stop trying to figure out every move of God. But to move when he say move, to speak when he say speak, he's calling us, he's shifting our prayer language, he's shifting our day-to-day -day language, he's uh, shifting our spiritual language, our spiritual talk, our spiritual walk. Yes, yes. So when Hannah gave, uh, uh, said to God that I give this uh, child to you, if you give me a son. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Oh Hallelujah. And when she did that, something broke. Verse 17 says, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee the peti thy petition that thou hast asked of him. See, when we give things back to God, All right. hallelujah, hallelujah, he'll grant us our petition. Yes, he will. But see, when we got everything figured out, or we think that we got everything figured out, and we're trying to do things within our own might, or the way that our own mind or capacity uh, 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 can't discern it and not actually letting God or allowing God, hallelujah, to do a work, hallelujah, in us and through us, hallelujah. He can't do nothing. So I could just imagine him standing back saying, I'm just waiting on them. Amen. They say they're waiting on me. But I'm waiting on them to do like Hannah did. I'm waiting on them to say, God, this is too much for me to handle. But I give it to you, oh God. I, I place it in your hand, oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. And if we do that, I could just imagine God saying the very same thing that Eli said. That God of Israel grant thee thy petition. So the Bible tells us to make our petitions known unto God. And there's some things that we've been praying for like Hannah for a long time. And the enemy, hallelujah, has even provoked us at times to try to make us think that it's not going to come to pass. But we have to do like Hannah did. We got to continue to pursue. We got to continue to stay focused. And, and we have to continue to know what our focal point is and to not waver to the left or to the right, uh, not look up or look down, but we got to keep our eyes straight ahead on the prize and the promises of God. Hallelujah. So don't let, uh, hallelujah, the enemy provoke you. Hallelujah. Don't let uh, the devil ride because if you let him ride, he'll surely want to drive. Don't let him ride. Hallelujah. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Stay focused on the mission, on the assignment. Hallelujah. On the vision. Keep your focus. 
when Jesus came to earth, he endured some things and he was faced with many obstacles, yeah. but he never lost his focus and his purpose for being on the earth. He knew that the purpose was the cross and he knew that even the grave was the purpose yeah. because he knew he had to die in order to, to rise. Yeah. So don't lose your focus. Keep your eyes on the promises of God. Keep your eyes on every vision, hallelujah, that God has given you. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy provoke you. Don't let the enemy place fear in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of hearing about coronavirus. I know y'all are. I try not to even say it. Hallelujah. Even with COVID-19 of the coronavirus, fret not. Fret not. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't keep your eyes on that because that is another trick of the enemy. It's for real. People are dying. Not discounting that. But don't be so focused on that because the enemy, hallelujah, get you all focused on that and then you need to be over here with your eyes on the vision. Yes. You need to be over here planning and making preparations for what's to come. Yes. So why the enemy is over here trying to speak and talk, God is over here, hallelujah, he's even in front of us. He's speaking, he's waving flags, I'm paraphrasing, trying to get our attention. Hallelujah, we need to be planning, we need to be making preparations. Hallelujah, last year God kept speaking to me throughout the year. Behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah, do you, can you not see it? He said it shall spring up and come forth. Hallelujah, he says it will be like poop your face. He says that it'll be out of the blue. Yes. I was reading back and ran across some notes, some of my notes from last year. Hallelujah. And that was one of the very things I touched this morning. Hallelujah. And it was just about a couple of lines and it was dated September of 2019. Hallelujah. And then as I went on to my old notes, hallelujah, on my electronic device, hallelujah, I began to see all the times that God uh, came to me to release to the people, to the churches, hallelujah, that he's getting ready to do a new thing. Hallelujah. We didn't see COVID coming. Uh -huh. no. It may not be a feel good thing, but it's a new thing. It's a thing that we've never seen before. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And even in the midst of it all, we've been seeing the manifestation of the move of God. We've been seeing the hand of God move, hallelujah, even in the world. I've never heard so many news broadcasters and doctors and nurses and lawyers, people of status, talk about God and acknowledge God, hallelujah, in my entire life. Uh -huh. Amen. God is still in the midst of us. Yes. And he's still moving. And he's still working, hallelujah. So I come by to tell you, don't give up. Don't give in. Hallelujah, stay, hallelujah, stay in purpose and stay in vision. Stay on, hallelujah, the battlefield. Stay on the threshing floor. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when you're on the threshing floor, hallelujah, the wheat is being beaten, it's being refined. Uh, hallelujah. So God has been fine tuning some of us, uh, a lot of us. Uh, those, hallelujah, as my husband said in prayer earlier, God is fine tuning those of us, hallelujah, that is willing to submit totally to Him to say, God, clean me up. Uh, he's fine tuning us, those of us who don't think that we are above being rebuked, uh, being restored, uh, being refined, and being confronted. Uh, hallelujah. We have to tell God, uh, show me. Yes, yes. Because that's what God is looking for even in this season also. Hallelujah. For us to come before him naked, hallelujah, and unashamed, saying, God, clean me up. Show me me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, in my unbelief. Help me, oh God, in my raggediness. Help me, oh God, in my messiness. Clean me up, oh God. Quiet on my tongue, oh God. God help me oh God help me in every area and aspect of my life hallelujah but there's some people hallelujah that God is waiting on to come to him naked 
you. Hallelujah. To rip your clothes and come before him naked so that he can do, hallelujah, a great work in you. He's wanting you to drop your pride. He wants you to lay down your pride. He wants you to lay down your arrogance. Hallelujah. Because he desires to do a new thing in you. Yes. And in order for God to do a new thing, right. hallelujah. My, my husband and I, we, we talk about this often. And we, if, if something comes to our mind, we, we, he and I will talk about the scripture and throw it all out at each other. Hallelujah. The Bible says you can't put old wine right. into new wineskins. So God is waiting on you all. Those of you, hallelujah, who this part of the word is for. God is waiting on you to take off that old wine skin, to put away that old wine skin, because he desires to pour out a new wine. Hallelujah. And he desires to pour a new wine into your vessel. That wine skin, that newness is you. That vessel is you. But you first got to put away and you got to take off the old things. You got to take off those things that so easily beset you. Those things He's calling us uh, to the threshing floor. He's calling us uh, to the dressing room. God has some fine uh, material and fabric uh, that he wants to wrap us with, uh, that he wants to adorn us with. He's calling even for the daughters out of a place, uh, hallelujah, where they've been sitting on the backside of the mountain. He's calling the women, hallelujah, to a place, uh, hallelujah, in ministry, in the marketplace, uh, So I need y'all women to walk with me. 
men. You're not higher than him. You're not better than him. Y'all are one. So God is calling us to lock arms. Hallelujah. And be together and walk in ministry as one. And this is how and why a lot of ministries, hallelujah, are being defeated by the enemy. Because there's so much division. So when Hannah locked arms with God in the spirit, and hallelujah, and she submitted to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, so something chipped, hallelujah, and, and it goes on to say that she became pregnant, hallelujah, after her and her husband slept together, hallelujah, and Hannah kept her word, she wanted to go to the temple, hallelujah, because they would go once a year, hallelujah, but her husband, hallelujah, they decided that she'll stay back until the baby was older, but Hannah kept her word, she took that baby, hallelujah, and she gave him to God, Hallelujah. She says that I lent him to you. She lent him to him. Hallelujah. She gave him and kept her promise. Hallelujah. This is what God, hallelujah, desires for us to do. Hallelujah. We got to give everything to him. Amen. Every vision, every promise. Hallelujah. Everything that we're believing God for that's been held up, I promise you, if you totally surrender your life to him, if you totally surrender you to him and ask him to move you out of the way and say, God, I totally surrender to you, hallelujah, to have your way, hallelujah, and that your will be done in my life uh, and that your will be done in ministry, hallelujah. If you totally surrender yourself uh, to God, if you surrender the people, hallelujah, if you are leaders and shepherds, if God has entrusted you to be a leader over his people stop ruling over the people hallelujah these people belong to God he's entrusted you as a shepherd to take watch over them hallelujah to shelter them to don't let wolves come in hallelujah and rip them apart he's entrusted you as a shepherd to protect them to lead them in the right way and to lead them in, into all truth and righteousness according to the word of God so it's time for us to rise up, hallelujah, and come up out of that place, hallelujah, that we once was in, hallelujah, because he's doing a new thing right before our eyes. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And I know that it seem, things have seemed uh, to be a little dark and slippery. God gave me, and I'm closing. God gave me a... Uh, a series called The Birthing and The Birthing Two. And the way he unfolds things, I did a launch a couple of years ago. Hallelujah. And he's given me so much more. And one of the things he gave me that he brought back to my remembrance this morning, and I'm going to say this and sit down. Amen. He gave me the incubation series I think it was and he began to unfold to me and everything that I put in my notes um, electronically it post stamps, it date stamps them and I said oh my god the incubation release, thank you Holy Ghost I had to go back to it hallelujah and, that, and it's so profound and I said god it seems like I know people may feel like they're in or have been in and still is in that incubation period in their lives with all the stuff going on with the quarantine and all of that. And I wanted to read to y'all real quick what the incubator means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, incubator, the definition of it, it is an enclosed apparatus providing a controlled environment for the care and protection of premature or unusually small babies. It is an apparatus used to hatch eggs or grow microorganisms under controlled conditions. Incubator. Incubation. The incubation release of God brought that part back to me, hallelujah, when I was finishing up my study this morning, hallelujah. And he, I said, oh my God, God, so what am I to say? or do with this since you brought it to me this morning or am I even to say anything on this? Hallelujah. When Hannah, hallelujah, was praying, hallelujah, 
and she prayed until she was drunk, but she never gave up and lost her focus. Hallelujah. Perhaps Hannah was in an incubation uh, period. God allowed, hallelujah, her to get in that place of incubation. So God is saying that we've been in an incubation period. Hallelujah. And he says that we're getting ready to approach the incubation release. Uh, he's getting ready to release us up out of that place of incubation that we've been in. And he says that when he brings us out, hallelujah, what happens? Once the baby's been in the incubation, we've been protected. We've been covered. Hallelujah. We've been cared for. We've been in a controlled environment just as the definition says. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. So God perhaps has put some of us uh, in an incubation period during this quarantine so that we won't give or deliver a premature birth. Yeah. All right. All right. So he says now that you've been in this place uh, of quarantine and incubation, he says there will be an incubation release. Hallelujah. He said that there will be a release uh, after this incubation period. Yeah. So continue to grow while you're in this place uh, of incubation. Uh, continue to grow. Uh, hallelujah. While you're in the incubator. How will I do that, woman of God? Continue to pray. Continue to stay focused. Hallelujah. Fast. Pray. Lay prostrate. Get drunk with new wine. Get drunk and get poured upon new oil. Amen. And in the incubator right. is where the premature infant receives its strength. Hallelujah. It gains weight. And it puts on weight. Yes. In the incubator. Hallelujah. Some of us done gained some weight during quarantine. I know I have. So I ain't talking about that weight. I'm talking about weight in the spirit. Weight in the spirit realm. So you're gaining your weight. You're getting your muscles up. You're getting your strength up spiritually. Hallelujah. In the incubator and in this incubation period. So when God get ready to open the doors to release you out of this place of incubation, you're going to be ready. You're going to be strapped. Hallelujah. You're going to come out with new wine. You're going to come out with new oil. You're going to come forth. Hallelujah. Like never before. You're going to come out. I just heard that. And when you come out, God says, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what I'm getting ready to do after this incubation period. I'm done. God bless you. Hallelujah. Back in the hands of my husband. Hallelujah. He's looking like she done shot up. Hallelujah. I shut down camp. Hallelujah. I don't hear nothing else. And when I don't hear anything else, I shut down. I'm done. Hallelujah. I pray that you all were blessed. Hallelujah. By the word that's going forth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I decree and declare. Hallelujah. That hallelujah. You're coming out of this. Hallelujah. And when you come out of this, you're coming out of a new creation. You're coming out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a newborn. Hallelujah. You're coming out of this. Hallelujah. And your release date. Hallelujah. Is soon to come. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And know. Hallelujah. That this too shall pass. Hallelujah. And that God has been protecting you. He's been growing you. He's been getting your weight up spiritually. Hallelujah. So that when you come out of this, when we come out of this, we're going to be heavy hitters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world ain't going to know what hit them. The church ain't going to know what hit them. Hallelujah. When God brings us out of this, we're coming out swinging. We're coming out doing the will of our Father. We're coming out with the newness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I give him honor today. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, women of God. Be encouraged, men of God. I know I've said a lot, but the Holy Spirit has spoken. God has spoken. Hallelujah. So don't go and sit down on this word. Amen. Hallelujah. Apply this word to your life. Hallelujah. To your situations. Hallelujah. For our Facebook and YouTube watchers, please like, share this word. Amen. Hallelujah. Even later on. Hallelujah. Even now. Start a watch party. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not about us. It's not about me. 
but it's about the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. So let this word be a blessing to someone, hallelujah, today, to encourage them, hallelujah, and empower them, amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For those that have been asking how to give, hallelujah, you can give at our cash app, CTRM, Acronym for Christ the Redeemer Ministry, CTRM, Palm Coast, amen? And then you can go to our ministry page or the page that you're on, and it tells you how to give through uh, Zelle or Zelly at PayPal as well. Amen. And you can also inbox us. Amen. Hallelujah for prayer, for seed sowing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And don't let me want to say this, and we're going to go in prayer. And we're going to get off of here. And out of here. Don't let what other people say you from sowing into anybody's ministry, but just know we, we teach that have a spirit of discernment. Be moved by God and the Holy Spirit before you give. And if you're moved in your heart and spirit to give to this ministry or any ministry, so hallelujah, because the Bible tells us whatever we sow, we shall reap it, and we shall reap a harvest, amen. The song is going on to say, I will never be bound again. I got my liberty and I'm finally free. Hallelujah. So I'm going to open the altar here in the natural. Hallelujah. It's only a few of us here because we're social distant. Hallelujah. And I'm going to open the altar over the airways and over the social media. If you do not know Christ, Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, hallelujah, now is the time. Hallelujah. I'm opening the altar. If you have a desire to receive him as your Lord and Savior, hallelujah, just even on social media, Put in a raised hand and emoji. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to lead you in. Hallelujah to the prayer of salvation. Hallelujah. Say with me and repeat after me, Lord. Hallelujah. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Hallelujah. And I accept you. Hallelujah. Into my life as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you came and you walked the earth and that you hung, bled, and died. Hallelujah. On the cross for me. That you rose on the third day for my sins. Hallelujah. And I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Bible declares that if you believe that, and you receive that by faith. You're saved. Hallelujah. So if you said that and you repeat it after me. Hallelujah. Type in the bar. Hallelujah. In the comment bar. I'm saved. I'm free. I got my liberty through Christ who is my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Inbox us. If you don't want to write it, type it or whatever, hallelujah, in the comment section, inbox us. Hallelujah. Text us, send us a Facebook message, hallelujah, to let us know that you just accepted Christ into your life. Uh, hallelujah. And we say welcome to the body and the family of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for everyone. Hallelujah. That is in this place today, oh God. We thank you for those that are watching and those that will watch the replay, oh God. Hallelujah. We ask, oh God, that you continue to cover us in your blood. That you, oh God, continue to be God. Do like only you can do. Heal, deliver, set free, oh God. Cover, oh God. Provide, oh God. Do, oh God, the things, oh God, that you have promised us. And we believe you, oh God. We trust you. We stand firm on your word, oh God. For your word, oh God, declares that by your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. I speak to the body today, oh God. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare healing over every sick body. Hallelujah. From the crown of the head to the soles of their feet, oh God. Hallelujah. That they are healed, that we are healed.
are healed in Jesus Christ's name, that we will walk from this day forward in our healing, oh God, hallelujah, and that we will testify of your goodness, oh God, hallelujah, I said you can cover everyone as they go about the rest of their day, oh God, shield and protect them, hallelujah, in all things, oh God, and I decree and declare that our week is blessed, hallelujah, and that we are, hallelujah, blessed only and through you and through your word. It is in Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen and amen and amen.